Hello. I had a gig to set up for, so I thought I might as well uh, roll a camera across it um, and do a little bit of a step-by-step -step how I approach voicing up front of house, but more importantly, really for this, how I approach voicing up monitor wedges, um, because that's obviously what we've just started looking at on Monday. Uh, this is uh, a full PA load-in from myself, it's a PA hire job, and, and, and mix in for a small show. It's a, this is a fairly small hall, you get 150, a couple of hundred people in it. Uh, it's, it's, there's also a lot coming back as well. Um, for a not that big room, um, there's, yes, it's, it's, it's quite the reverberant space, um, but that reverberation decays quite quickly. Um, we'll take that into consideration as we voice up. Uh, what have you missed seeing? Well, uh, I was pushing some flight cases uh, and I was putting some loudspeakers in approximately the right place. Um, I've done that um, and also I have uh, sent some pink noise to the left hand side of the PA system and the right hand side of the PA system, the front of house, and I unmuted component by component just to establish that things were going to the right place. Uh, I've also sent some pink noise uh, to these wedges as well, but you've missed nothing else. So literally, I've just really loaded in and patched some stuff in. Uh, for the voicing then, uh, my approach is to usually use the lead vocal, the center vocal mic. Um, this is gonna be it, it's a beta 58. Uh, it's going to be going into um, stage box input one. But for the time being, I'm gonna take it to the front of house. Uh, we're gonna stick it in just directly into the desk on input one, and I'll use this to do my voicing up. Uh, reason being, uh, kind of like two birds, one stone. Uh, I've established uh, the same microphone that's gonna be the main microphone for the show. Uh, I've established the system with that. Heard what it sounds like at the back of the room and heard what it sounds like uh, up here uh, in the monitors. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, he here we are over by front of house. Um, being that this is uh, it's not a massive room, uh, having a small footprint uh, front of house is, uh, is necessary. So uh, this little compact uh, Yamaha digital mixer is, uh, is good for us. I'm going to be able to get all my inputs from stage uh, within uh, 16 channels. Um, now this is very much a monitors from front of house gig uh, for a show of this size. Uh, it's totally feasible that we'll be able to do the same guy mixing the front of house show. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to do monitors. Uh, yeah, maybe in an ideal world, uh, there are a clear advantages of having a dedicated monitor engineer uh, stage left, um, close to the artists, scanning the stage all the time. But the reality is, uh, for budgetary reasons and just general uh, show scale reasons, uh, it's, it's very likely uh, that at an event of this uh, nature, um, front of house engineer uh, is gonna be looking after the monitors. Now, there's a way of setting um, uh, that up, monitors from front on uh, any mixing console like this. Uh, which is going to work really well, and that's this. That uh, I'm going to use two layers. Layer number one is uh, channels one to sixteen, faders one to sixteen. Uh, they are going to be my uh, inputs one to sixteen from stage into the stage box. Rather than having an analog splitter, uh, which you would need if you're doing dedicated monitors from stage side. Don't need any of that. Just going to use the same inputs one to 16 from the stage box on stage and basically copy them over to the second layer on this desk, which is channels 17 to 13, or faders 17 to 30, 17 to 32. I think I just said 17 to 13. I didn't mean that. I meant 17 to 32. So that again, uh, layer one, front of house faders, yeah, front of house mix. Uh, layer two, monitors faders, monitors mix. So what that means is, let's look at uh, this first channel. Uh, I usually put my uh, lead vox, center vox on channel one, um, just because 
I think that's the most important thing. So uh, it's going to be there. Now, here we are on the front of house layer. And I can do my front of house processing, uh, send that to left, right. There we go. Um, I've got the same input from stage on my monitors layer. This is now channel 17. Let's tidy it up a bit. This is now channel 17. It's the same input from stage. It's, it's an analog input down an analog stage box uh, coming from stage. Um, but I can process this channel for monitors entirely differently. Different EQ, uh, different dynamics, um, which has clear advantages because the mix that you're putting in people's monitors on stage is, is their thing. That is what they're going to pitch and time perform from. And there's a requirement, not just that the, what goes into monitor wedges is of a different uh, level balance in terms of, oh, Centervox wants more of his vocal than he does guitar. It's way more than that. It's about sonic quality. Um, we said it before in session. If you over compress, for example, a keyboard in a keyboardist's monitor wedge, then that might be a, that kind of compression might be appropriate for the front of house mix. However, it's quite possibly not going to be great for the monitor wedge for the keyboardist because he's going to have to strike a key way harder to get the kind of dynamic feel that he normally gets when he hears himself play acoustically. So it's really important to see your yeah, uh, inputs to monitor wedges as a totally different signal chain if you've got the faders for it. Okay, sometimes you're going to be doing monitors from front of house uh, using auxiliaries and you will have to just auxiliary send pre-fader uh, on your front of house input channels because you just don't have the extra channels to effectively duplicate all your inputs from stage and stick them on a different layer. Um, but if you can, at any point, if you can uh, duplicate your inputs to there's my front of house layer and there's my monitors layer, totally independent uh, signal path, um, obviously shared, uh, shared from the stage uh, and the, uh, the preamplifiers are shared. Uh, the analog head amp gain is shared. But the, all the channel processing after that is unique for the monitors. Here's what I mean in terms of the routing. If I go to uh, uh, it's patch and look at this routing. So what I've got then is I've got analog to digital AD uh, 1 to 16 on inputs 1 to 16. And then uh, inputs 17 to 32, I've got the same again, basically. So um, uh, where's my finger? There it is. That, oh, that is a copy, a duplicate of that soft patching. Um, same thing that you would do on an analog console um, with a Y split cable. Oh, and look, here's a Y split cable. Um, so you would take uh, the input from stage, put it into one channel for your front of house mix and put it into another channel somewhere up here for your monitors mix and be able to process front of house and monitors for that particular source independently.